conference call um, on the topic of uh, Indian bureaucracy, the effects of polity on the Indian bureaucracy, pressures, problems, and solutions. We have two eminent speakers with us, an IAS officer and an IPS officer who was in Indian bureaucracy and had gained experience over the time. One is Mr. Kannan Gopinathan. Um, he is, is an IAS officer who retired from the service after the abrogation of Article 370. And uh, he's an Indian activist joining us from India. And Dr. Vikram Singh, uh, IPS former DG, uh, Uttar Pradesh Police. He's also joining us to give his views. We have our panelists, Padmaja Shah, Poona Mangarwal, Zahiruddin Ali Khan, and Waliullah Khadri, who is going to give us uh, their insight into this topic of how the Indian bureaucracy should be and how it is right now. What are the problems, pressures, and solutions? The format of this program will be as follows. Zoya Mehween will be introducing Kanan Gopinathan. And after which Mr. Kanan Gopinathan will speak for about 10 to 15 minutes on the topic. And after which uh, Mr. Vikram Singh will be introduced by Fani Reddy Badam. And after which, you know, the panelists will be called to speak and give their insight for two to three minutes, uh, followed by Q&A. We request all the participants to please mute their mics and uh, ask the questions in the chat room. <laughs> and uh, our uh, speakers will be uh, looking at uh, the chat room. When they have a conclusion remarks, they will also address the chat questions. Plus, we will also be raising the chat questions. I will be assisted with uh, by Zoya Mehween and Fani Reddy Badam in taking up the chat questions. So please mute yourself and uh, we will begin the program. I invite Zoya Mehween to please go ahead and introduce Mr. Kanan Gopinathan. Very good evening, one and all. It's an absolute honor to introduce Mr. Kanan Gopinathan who is a former Indian Administrative Service Officer and an activist from Kerala. He resigned from service as a mark of protest against the restrictions imposed in Jammu and Kashmir following the abrogation of Article 370. He did his early education in Palakkar district of Kerala before moving to Kottayam and was state level joint top in the Kerala Technical High School Leaving Certificate Examination of 2001. Doing his engineering in electrical and electronics from Birla Institute of Technology, Ms. Ra Ranchi Jarkhan, he was also the recipient of gold medal in the stream. After his resignation, he has been vocal on the importance of raising questions in a democracy, the threat of perceived victimhood among the majority and on the violation of fundamental rights in Jammu and Kashmir. A vociferous critic of constitutionality and morality of the Citizens' Amendment Act of 2019. And this proposed NRC. Uh, I request you to please mute yourself, the others. Thank you. He became one of the leading figures in the Citizenship Amendment Act protests that erupted across India against the Citizenship Amendment Act. He was detained. <laughs> <at multiple days>. <laughs> Agra and Prayagraj, preventing him from taking part in protests and delivering talks. The government asked Mr. Gopinathan to report for duty again in April 2020, which he refused by saying that he's ready to volunteer for COVID-19 crisis but will not be joining IAS again. Later, an FIR was registered against him under various sections of Disaster Management Act 2005, Epidemic Diseases Act 1897, and IPC on the basis of government complaint over his refusal to rejoin duty. I welcome you, sir. Over to Dr. Jamil. Thank you. Uh, so is that my cue? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, yeah. That's your speech. Uh, uh, so uh, th thank you so much, uh, Zoya, for introducing me and uh, welcome to all the... Uh, <laughs> other guests, panelists, and also thank you for an opportunity to be here and discussing 
on certain issues, especially on Indian bureaucracy. Probably this is a topic that we should be discussing more at home, uh, so that uh, this, uh, how do we face the challenges and how do we come to solutions? Uh, and so this particular topic, uh, which is of importance and which we should be discussing more and more at home here. Uh, but uh, the way I see uh, or I saw when I entered bureaucracy, uh, as I said, uh, I was an engineer and I was working in Motorola or Prescale Semiconductors for a period. And then I joined uh, civil service with a clear motive as to what is the role of a bureaucracy. The, bu the role of the bureaucracy is to enhance the rights of the citizens. You know, it is to enhance, enable, ensure, you know, it is to enhance, enable, ensure, and enhance those rights. That is precisely the role of an enabler of the rights. And in fact, for a country like India, one of the key journey that we are undertaking is not of India as a nation reaching a developed nation or becoming a world stage power or something like that. Something, the journey, the most important journey that is happening is something very simple. That is a journey of our individuals from being a subject to a citizen. Because all throughout till 60 years back, we have been, we have been subjects. And uh, that is not to say that, you know, be it in, in kingdoms, uh, before, after that, maybe during British roles when we are protected people, we gained freedom, but we didn't attain citizenship, citizenship in its true sense. And I think citizenship has only one sense. Uh, at times we differentiate it into passive citizenship and active citizenship, etc. But I don't think that. I think either you can be a subject and a recipient of benevolent benefits, benefits from a benevolent dictator or a ruler, or you can be a citizen wherein you can assert your rights, you can ask questions, you know, without having to worry. And this relationship how do we empower how do we enable this journey of all individuals in our country from being a subject to a citizen that is one of and that was the process uh, i hope i may be able to uh, work upon and i may be able to help uh, or uh, accelerate while being in bureaucracy and you could do a lot of things so it will be very bad to say that in indian bureaucracy doesn't let you do things you know it does let you do a lot of things and especially uh, in a scenario wherein there is serious resource crunch, your resource allocation is also discretionary. Uh, it depends on who is sitting on the chair of that, uh, wherein you can decide where this resource should go, where uh, that should go. But at the same time, that decision making is only allowed within a bandwidth, within a bandwidth of what that current political view allows. So currently, if let's say the dominant political view of is of X, then suddenly your bandwidth is reduced to x uh, around that x maybe plus minus something and you only within that range you are allowed to execute so while you gain a lot of power to execute things you lose a lot of power to shape public opinion or shape those things you know shape how it should be and this is a this is a kind of a contradictory uh, thought process while uh, which i faced while i was in service and that contradiction uh, sort of increased or maybe found uh, an unacceptable level when something happened and it was not per se the 370 it is not even the violation of those fundamental rights it was much more than that because what i felt the most painful was the silence around it you know i had a lot of faith in uh, misplaced faith or whatever you can call it but i had a lot of faith in the institutions of our uh, our own country and i felt that if something is happening to this extent maybe the voices would come out you know these questions would come and and it will be challenged. And when that, I felt somehow was not happening. So it, it was a question of uh, resigning. You know, when institutions fail, individuals have to stand up. There is no other way. Uh, you can't expect institutions to always run. So uh, at that point of time, as an individual, there is nothing more that I could do than to get out. And while in service, because Indian civil okay. service is also slightly uh, difficult in the sense you can't express while you are in service. Uh, you can't express freely because there are conduct rules uh, which bound you to certain. You can't criticize the government while you are in, while you are serving. So I found the more honourable thing was to resign and put in my papers. I had some 27 years of ser service more, but to get out and say that at this point of juncture, the best service that I can do for my country is to put is to resign from the service, and that was the best service that I could do for my country. And to get out and say that these things X Y Z are wrong and it's important that we raise these questions and raising these questions does not make anybody anti-national a dissent or a disagreement and this is something that happens this moralization of politics moralization of politics in the sense 
you feel that you have a view okay i have a view i am a good person i i so my view is good you have a different view since i am a good person my view is good and your view is different from mine so your you your view is bad and you are bad since you are bad so whatever happens to you is okay so this kind of a, so disagreements generally tend to become a battle between good and bad or existential battle between you know evil uh, kind of a thing which which is the dangerous in a democracy you know uh, dem, dem, i i find democracy to be the most difficult project uh, most difficult project and the easiest thing that we take it for granted because democracy puts a lot of onus on citizens individual citizens to understand issues to co uh, question the, those in power and even to protest and even to come out and face the consequences of those protest to save the democracy you know at the same time in a democracy like india we expect all these from our citizens without actually empowering them as citizens so we keep them as subjects when it comes to rights and powers but when it comes to protest we expect them to come out and say no this is wrong uh, you know they we expect our own people to come out and protest against a powerful government despite the consequences so it is slightly difficult uh, at uh, slightly difficult ask and especially considering the uh, considering that democracy is a, a difficult project at the same time it is easier to be in authoritarianism there is a reason that all throughout the history we have seen uh, it's it's always been authoritarian you know it's hardly a couple of centuries that we have been democracies and that also is you know very only very few countries have succeeded in being democracies most of the countries have gone back to authoritarianism because it puts less pressure on an average individual uh, he doesn't have to understand the issues question blah 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 all that he has to do is i trust you you know you are there to take care of me the leader also says you trust me you just give be loyal to me i will take care of everything that is required. so this becomes kind of a relationship uh, and it was in this context i felt being in bureaucracy would have meant furthering or you know actively shrinking the spaces of dissent because uh, it is not that you would be asked to do illegal things at times that is there but it's not that the, you would be asked to do illegal things what happens is you would be asked to do or asked to find legal ways to do unethical things you know it's not illegal ways it's not at all never it's never illegal ways nobody would do an illegal thing but you are asked to do legal ways to do unethical things so let's say i am i am i'm i'm a district magistrate i have a power to send anybody to jail for 6 months while you know as under pasa or nsa or psa whatever now but it it means that i the law gives that power or the discretion to the person uh, in chair assuming that he would use it you know in a very fair manner that if it is required or not required but when the when the direction comes it is like okay send these two to jail for 6 months you know they are making unnecessary nuisance and this should be put to jail and when that comes i am not doing an illegal act it's a perfectly legal act because the law empowers me to do it and it, I, all that i need to see say i concur i concur with what or is there and you only need to do uh, that exact particular thing that yes and it won't be illegal and also since there is no accountability jurisprudence as mr Mother, uh, justice madan loku was writing recently in the sense even if i gave an order which is completely wrong if it if at all it goes to a high court or a supreme court since the assumption is that i made that mistake bona fide i did not do it deliberately i did that mistake you know it was a mistake so there is a protection which comes along with it in the sense that the court may say that no reasonable person could have ordered such a uh, you know uh, imprisonment order but it doesn't come with any further thing you know the circumstances under which such order was issued may be inquired into that additional law is not additional line is will never come on any of the orders or judgments it will just say the person may be released because it is not a reasonable order the assumption is that it was a bona fide order and hence it needs to be you know it, it is a bona fide order it was but it was a mistake since it was a bona fide mistake there is no further action on the officer but the person be uh, released but, but you look at it from the person's point of view a citizen's point of view he has been put in jail for 6 months for no reason and for a, to a large extent it is because knowingly a wrong order had been passed since even then he's for him his family his children it it is their life has been tarnished uh, just look at a person being arrested there are a couple of kids in his family who's be looking at his father being taken away in the night and you know the entire society seeing them as criminals uh, for for absolutely no reason it doesn't matter after six, after 6 months he comes back or not and this it is this relationship it is not about whether you can criticize the prime minister or whether you can criticize the government of india or it's not that more importantly it's 
it's in your day to day relationship with power people in power and it could be police it could be your tahsildar it could be your collector it could be anybody and you know it could be anybody who is in power in the government when your relationship with them is highly uh, distorted it is highly skewed and and, and it's a day to day relationship unless we are able to work towards equalizing that relationship our journey from subject to citizen will be incomplete we can have collective movements we can have dalit uh, movement we can have uh, gender justice movements we can have environmental movements yes but those are collective movements even a leader of those move, those movements if he has to go to a government office first thing he will do is try to find somebody who would know that officer who is in his relationship or something so that before he goes he ensures that he'll get a fair treatment at least he'll he'll not be you know so he tries to find that is where the relationship of an individual with the state is 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 highly asymmetric now and it doesn't it doesn't uh it is not in sync with what a democracy should be it is not at all in sync with what a democracy should be so i think the acts like a right to information act or acts like uh what you call a right to a food or right to education where where the where an individual is allowed to assertively assertively ask for questions and uh, right not it's not just you are begging for some benefits from the government rather you are asserting your uh, your rights unless those framework is expanded upon uh, i don't think uh, the fundamental relationship between an individual and the state in indian democratic context would would change much and i think that is that is the place where we need to work on and we need to work on collectively i don't think it just in india it is need, needs to be worked upon uh, across the world and uh, there are many democracies where this asymmetry does exist we need to understand also how this relationship day to day relationship with people in power and who are otherwise a, a subject or a citizen should be citizen how do we make that relationship a little more equal and i think if you are able to work along in that that framework we will at least reach uh, a much more enriching democracy in, in in a short period of time i think that's my time also so thank you thank you kannan uh, for telling us what exactly the bureaucracy is uh, feeling the pressure you have uh, narrated beautifully that they all it wants you or any civil services officer to find the legal ways to do unethical things that's exactly the discourse we want to take further in our conference call uh, and uh, we will uh, raise some questions uh, on this particular uh, one liner punch you gave uh, so with this i would like to invite uh, fani reddy badam our youth coordinator indian american forum uh, to please introduce dr vikram singh ips uh, fani reddy please open yeah. yeah thank you dr jamil uh, good evening dr vikram singh uh, welcome to our indian american forum uh dr vikram singh is a, a former officer of indian police service from 1974 batch he is also the former director general of police uh, uttar pradesh the largest police force in the world consisting of over 190000 personnel uh, one of the most highly decorated officers in the country who has relentlessly fought against national international terrorist outfits and the crime syndicates he directly worked for the modernization and induction of state of art technology and universal best practices to make police effective and people friendly uh, he completed his uh, msc from alhabad university in 1972 and also holds a phd in ecology from kumon university in, from in 1990 uh, he is currently working as a chancellor of noida international university and he's also a guest speaker at uh, over 50 prestigious national and international institutions uh, i'm going to list the awards and accolades he had uh, achieved so far uh, he's got president's police medal for gallantry in 1986 uh, again in 1988 uh, he's got a bar to president's police medal for gallantry in 1987 and again in 1989 uh, he's got president's police medal for long and meritorious service 1990 uh, president's police medal for distinguished for service again in 1996 and he's also got patin seva medal 2001 bar to patin seva medal 2002 and he holds the limca book of records uh, as one of the most highly decorated police officer uh, he's also got a publications with uh, below publications where you could find them either in amazon or flipkart now there are a couple of books named uh, ecosystems of central himalayas 
Human Rights and Police National Award presented by National Human Rights Commission for this. And then he's also got Chamber Records, Boggies or Bandits. Uh, and he's got the ISIS, uh, the Black Canopy of Mental Slaughter. Uh, he's also a TED Talker, and I'm going to post a couple of videos in the chat window if you're interested. He's got uh, how youth can emerge as winners and innovations leading to the evolution of policing. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Crimson. Thanks for joining us this evening. Thank you, Mr. Fari, for the very kind and very magnanimous introduction. The beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Jamil, for giving me this vibrant platform of Indian American Forum and to debate upon the most contemporary and the relevant subject, Indian bureaucracy and clean politics. In the current, in, in current India, possibilities, pressures and solutions. I would like to begin that in the 36 that I served as a bureaucrat, I have seen two or three phases emerging. When I joined service in 1974, it was a different environment altogether. I would not say that the pressures were not there, but as Kanan Gopinathan has said, that what he encountered was something that is in fact the lowest ebb in the political ethos that can, can possibly think of. I have seen politicians of all hues and colors and when I joined service, they were perhaps those who had seen the freedom struggle and they were the last residue of those and the titans and those who, on whom you can swear on their integrity. Over a period of time, things changed and the ecosystem changed. What Mr. Gopinathan has said, legal ways of doing illegal things. I would say they are not subtle ways. This may be something in South India, but here it is blatant. The politician would say, Dr. Vikram Singh, I am here with a picture frame. You choose the picture yourself, whatever be the picture, but it has to be within the frame that I prescribe. I have to say it's my painful duty, Honorable Chief Minister, sir. The frame has to subscribe within the norms and the parameters of the Constitution. And anything that is beyond the norms of the Constitution, it shall be my painful duty to oppose and see to it that it does not come into the picture. No picture is going to be framed on a, fra on a frame that is illegal, unethical, and immoral. I had a choice like Mr. Kanan, either to quit service or to be continue in service. I chose the latter option to continue in service and see to it that the second and third line of leadership is mentored and created. One can be a one-person army, and it is only in the first two years that your waters and your backbone is tested. And once they realize that this man is prepared to get the gallantry medal posthumously, nobody is going to ask you the second time to do anything that is immoral or illegal. Because you know that you have nerves of steel that you can oppose any illegal and unethical orders. You can go to say and you can ask those of who are familiar with the politics of Uttar Pradesh, if there is any difficult state, it is Uttar Pradesh. And in that state, if you are able to handle the politicians there, and there are people who came into my office and say, after all, Dr. Singh, is there a way where this work can be done? To Mr. Kanan, I would say, there's only one way. Get me out of the seat and then you get somebody who's more pliable and convenient. Till the time on the seat, don't think for a moment that I'll not only not do it, I'll see to that it is not done. Request to hand over the police lines to a private builder. Request to subscribe to chronic capitalism. I will go into specifics. Request to be favorable to particular tenders and pay payments. That's not going to happen. Anything apart from meritocracy is not going to happen. And let me tell you, yes, if you may ask that, what is the price that I had to pay? The price was that if you are picked for the United Nations, you will not be relieved. If you are picked up by government of India, you will not be relieved. You are picked up at an assignment that are considered to be extremely difficult, but that is a part of the game because when a bureaucrat joins service, the only incentive that he can expect and the only thing that he can expect from the government is the paycheck from the Honorable President of India, nothing more and nothing less. 
a politician can only make things hot and difficult for you but what good is a politician who is supposed to represent the steel frame of india if he does not have the guts to look straight into the eye of an unethical politician and say with the greatest of respect and politeness this sir is not going to happen you want certain people to put behind bars if they deserve to be put behind bars by all means if you want to me you me to use force or the police to use force the force shall be used as per the norms of the drill manual and as per the police regulations not indiscriminate because you want certain section of people to be the recipient of the bullets of the, on, the, on the basis of the firearms that i would be using and ordering the quantum of force this sir is not going to happen let me tell you very clearly then for those who understand urdu and hindi to phir aapko singh sahab mere virodh ka samna karna padega then mr singh you will have to understand and be understand that i am going to oppose you tooth and nail from now onwards and if it comes from the top most level of politicians you can understand that the threat is not going to only but what kind of threats what can a politician do if i am straight forward if i am honest if i am abiding by the rule of law transfer is the only thing and petty things like kanan gopinathan has suffered registration of cases frivolous cases truth ultimately has a propensity of coming out in the open and exposing the charlatans and the cheats who lodge fake and fabricated and malicious cases against honest and straight forward people a bureaucrat is supposed to have unimpeachable integrity integrity not only in just financial matters integrity in respect of intellectual honesty that i belong to everyone and everyone belongs to me every indian has the same level of dignity and respect and every indian is important it is not for the political masters to twist the arm of the bureaucrats and ensure that he is put behind bars unfairly and maliciously it should not happen and any bureaucrat worth his salt is not going to toe the line of a corrupt bureaucrat look straight into the eye but then it comes i do not say at a price it comes to say a minor adjustment and what is that minor adjustment dr jamil that you do something that is expected of you to do and the politician says that you are entitled to get a plot of land anywhere in the state it is not a plot it is a fishing bait that is offered to you any weapon of your choice weapon don't come cheap they come at half a million rupees also and a million rupees also any weapon of your choice any plot of land but the day you accept this kind of free bounties from the political system you are finished your reputation is gone for a toss your only claim your only claim is to that of the paycheck from the president of india arm twisting yes it does happen inconvenient postings do happen if you are nominated to the united nations assignment you will not be allowed relieved if you are going to want to go to government of india you will not be relieved these are the pin pricks that can come to you but what good is a bureaucrat if he does not say though my head be bleeding it will be unbowed i can tell you for example just as kanan has left the service i was in service i did not give bullshit to anyone and i did not take bullshit from anyone i belong to everyone and everyone belong to me and i can say with honor that they may have hated me the corrupt politicians but in my career of 36 years what to talk of an inquiry not even an explanation was called but yes three murder cases were registered against me three murder cases to be investigated by the cbi the trauma that the family had to undergo the expenses that one had to take up in the supreme court of india because legal assistance as zoya would know and other lawyers would know does not come cheap and the government throws you on your own and you have to fend for yourself going to the supreme court erodes all your saving and there may be a time when you have to mortgage your wife's jewelry also and the family lands as well but that is a small price that is nothing when it comes to self esteem and dignity of your own person you emerged victorious and that is the consolation that every honest bureaucrat has mr phani please do remind me when the time is up i think my time is up i will sum up in just two sentences that i don't see that there is any the youngsters that are joining the service now are focused as mr kanan is are energetic are intellectually honest and straight forward nobody can twist their arm as napoleon had said in any organization there will be a few exceptions who would be willing to carry out 
illegitimate, illegal, and immoral orders of the powers that be. But the large segment, which continues to be the steel frame of administration, which is supposed to uphold the dignity and the sanctity of the constitution, I feel is unpolluted. And the sanctity is what India stands for. And the strength of the, the India lies in the steel frame of this administration. Thank you so much, Dr. Jamil Sahab, Indian American Forum, for the time and the very patient hearing that you have given me. God bless all of you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Vikram Singh, for uh, highlighting the integrity and the honesty, which is the need of the hour in current Indian context, uh, for all the bureaucrats to stand by and uphold the Constitution, which is the topic of discourse we are going to take forward. Now, I invite uh, Ms. Padma Jasha, our panelist, uh, to give her remarks as to how she sees the Indian bureaucracy in the Indian context. What are the pressures one may face from the sidelines as an Indian citizen, how she feels? And what is the current state of uh, executive vis-a-vis -vis the politicians um, of India? So Ms. Padma Jasha, please open your audio and video. Please uh, give your remarks in uh, two to three minutes. Good evening, everyone. Uh, and thank you, Dr. Jamil and in, uh, Indian American Forum for having me with you on a distinguished panel like this. Uh, it was uh, wonderful to hear Dr. Vikram Singh and uh, Mr. Kannan Gopinathan um, about their uh, practical experience in being in the service uh, of, um, uh, as part of Indian bureaucracy. Um, it's a, as we all know, it's Indian bureaucracy, both IAS, IPS, IFS, whichever service, are coveted services. Some of the best brains of uh, cream of society enters this service. But ultimately, when uh, it actually gets to work on the ground, something uh, goes amiss. If you look at uh, just today's and yesterday's newspapers, we are seeing a news item that somebody like Father Stan Swami, who's an 83 year old man, uh, who's been arrested and is in uh, uh, prison. He's asking for a straw to sip water and he has to appeal to a court. And uh, the court says after 20 days, they will answer that question. And I think somewhere along the way, if the, the jails are headed by IPS officers, for 20 rupees, you can get a whole bunch of straws and get, you can supply it to them. Is that a crime? We, we actually see that um, criminal politicians and actual mafia sit in the jails and run and empires and also run elections from the prisons and are constantly winning also many times. So what is it that makes the services, the people, the personnel who are in these services lose all human values and empathy and get so disconnected with ordinary people's concerns. It's not a big thing it, and it need not be Father Stan Swami. Any human being who, who is under your care, if he is begging for water, we give. It's a basic human thing that, that is done. And here you have to wait, uh, go to court, to wait for 20 days. And this, I think um, uh, the, this was uh, bureaucracy theoretically was criticized for this. There are, um, it is a service which is trained in capacity and over, over conformity, they say. You just over conform in order to just be perverse uh, and perversely disconnected with people. And I think that is a, very disheartening thing to see in a democracy. If you cannot humanize your society, and if the bureaucracy is not a vehicle for humanization, of, uh, I think it's very, very distressing all around. And this happens all the time. And we see, we do see in the lab, earlier generation, there were wonderful officers, especially in Andhra Pradesh and other states, People like SR Shankar and BD Sharmaji and Saxena ji, ES Sharmaji, who have intervened and completely with empathy have tried to help people as much as they could. And some people who couldn't fit in um, earlier also, like 
people like um, Aruna Roy and Harsh Mandar and like Kananji here have left. But the point is that it is, isn't it possible at all to be human and uh, concerned about the uh, um, welfare of ordinary citizens? Leave alone rights. We have complete contempt in the system today, both in the bureaucracy and uh, in the police service, IS and the, for human rights of ordinary individuals. Everything is politicized and it's through political connections things have to uh, come about and that is very amazing. And uh, while uh, Mr. Gopinath was talking, uh, I felt that he was naturally concerned about uh, the goodwill and inability to, or being stopped from doing good things because it's him who's speaking. But I have a feeling that many in the service have themselves become politicized. And uh, as uh, Dr. Vikram Singh was mentioning, are looking for freebies and uh, uh, pandering to the political will and then doing things in a very unlawful and illegal way. My question, actually two things I have, which I've been, I've been wondering about, I have no answers and I just wonder if uh, large scale, uh, on a large scale, if bureaucracy is being pushed or both the IP IPS and the IAS officers are being pushed, what are the mechanisms that are in place? Aren't the associations strong enough? Are there no solidarities within the structures that actually support each other? in such times when somebody stands up and says, this is not done, this is an illegal order, I'm not going to do it. What do associations do? Don't we have any mechanisms for that? That is one of the questions. And another thing, I was deputed to government of Andhra Pradesh for three years and I saw this whole process very closely, how the bureaucracy functions, though I'm actually a university professor. And I found that within the um, bureaucracy itself, it is a highly feudal structure. I used to see that a senior officer, even if he is by one year senior, will not come onto the phone to a, when a junior officer comes, uh, calls. It is so hidebound and hierarchy bound in the manner in which it functions. It's extremely feudal in the way there is no egalitarian, um, or uh, a structure which is actually um, suitable for democracy, let's say, the equal uh, responses, equality in spirit, uh, that seems to be missing. And uh, th that in itself needs to be broken. This hidebound uh, feudal kind of uh, iron frame structure that is there, within the associations, within the bureaucracy itself, that, that feudal structure um, uh, and mentality actually, not so much the structure also, it's the, just the worldview, the way it is seen and the way it is responded to is also highly problematic, I feel. Because if, uh, if your organization is headed by a lower ranking uh, IAS officer, the higher ranking officers who are supposed to come to board meetings and other meetings will never show up. They will send a junior who cannot take any decisions. So they're already, um, there is a incapacity built into the system. You cannot function because it's a third party functioning that have immediately kicks in. So it's a, these are all very peculiar things that are there within the structure itself and the way the people employed respond to this that um, I think a lot needs to be fixed in that. And it can come from associations themselves when there is as a fraternity or a uh, sisterhood, whatever, both men and women, should actually look at these issues of uh, how such a feudal structure in spirit can actually bring about democracy. That is another thing I think is a very important thing to, one needs to uh, look at. And thanks for giving me this opportunity. A couple of things that were bothering me, I said, I hope I was not uh, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> facing difficult issues. I like uh, both Dr. Vikram Singh and Kannan to respond to those uh, good questions uh, raised in her uh, talk. Uh, Kannan, if you want to go first. Yeah, hi, sure. Thank you. Uh, no, actually, uh, it, before answering the question, because 
because i have been commented upon or my, my remarks have also been commented upon so i would like to clarify certain things in this uh, sense that first is it was not due to any difficulties that i personally faced that i resigned i was having a pretty good tenure pretty you know and if you are an upright officer as sir has telling there is you know you can fight it it's not it's it's a personal battle you can fight it out and i was posted in uh, somewhere in near gujarat uh, and something which was happening was happening in kashmir so i had no reason to be even affected by it because none of the files or none of the decisions were happening through it but that's not how that's not how you function when you see that something wrong is happening and nobody is questioning it and when you see that questioning mechanism becoming silenced then you take a decision as to what needs to be done what you know somebody has to speak up and that was the reason to speak up it was not uh, you can limit your own influence you can say that i am worried about what i can do that is one way to look at it and see that uh, throughout my period what i can do okay you can achieve a lot of things at the same time you can also see at certain times what is it that beyond what your sphere of influence is whether you can take a position on that and so i would like to clarify that so it was not any personal difficulties uh, in the service that forced me to do it not at all if you are an upright officer you have enough space the max it's like you have a bulletproof vest all that you need is the courage to stand up and take a bullet you know there is a there is an article 311 is there which pro, 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 you know protects you so if you have a courage to take that you can do uh, a lot of things in the service the second part was also that it is not even that the frustration of not getting you know not letting you know uh, politicians not letting things being done that's not the case governance should not be left to the charity of bureaucrats you know or the goodwill of bureaucrats what we are still now expecting is that there will be good bureaucrats there will be excellent bureaucrats there will be top of the class individuals who will be coming as bureaucrats and trying to reform the system that's not that's not going to function how it is going to function is when you change the relationship between an individual and those who are in power and those who are in poor power would mean permanently in power are the bureaucrats starting from the peon uh, to everybody to a chief secretary or a dgp or a capsec or whatever you see when you transform that and one of the ways we have done is, is you look at it is an rti uh, even today a person can file an rti he is not requesting he is not pleading he is rightfully asking for information when it comes to something which is you know within the government today in the night let's say you are getting out uh, after this meeting walking around uh, you know at 9 o'clock or 11 o'clock maybe with a couple of friends and let's say a couple of policemen comes on a bike and he they try to wield a lathi on you that why are you here go back to your home what will be your first reaction your first reaction will not be who are you to ask this question or why are you asking this it will be like sir chhod do hum chale jayenge and hame mariye mat please don't hit us we will go back because that is how our relationship with people in power have been defined and if we are ready to work on that relationship because we are putting a lot of focus on how bureaucrat can improve bureaucrats shouldn't matter uh, it shouldn't matter who has come it shouldn't matter whether x or y or those individuals have come in sat in which place or not it shouldn't matter if x is gone y is co- has come then also the delivery should happen because it is a demand based delivery it's not a supply driven delivery what happens when you put a lot of focus on individuals is that it becomes supply driven a good officer comes certain things gets done uh, next time he goes some some bad officer comes people don't ask for a change people just say the earlier officer was a better one let's say the next time the third officer comes who is not only really not good but also takes money the next third time the people will say the previous one at least is not taking money this one started taking money also there is no expectation there is no demand that it doesn't matter whether it is x or y or z i will need 85% 90% of the delivery done irrespective of the bureau bureaucrats who are there because I, my service delivery shouldn't be dependent on the individual who is sitting on the chair it should be dependent on the framework of constitutional framework of legal framework of my rights which are there and if you are able to work on that and we have example uh, like i said beat on rti and bureaucracy is highly feudal it's also highly hierarchical individually people are many people have said don't call me sir i can pick up the phone and that kind of thing but it is highly very marginal and very very individual it is not a systemic thing and there is a reason for it to be bureaucratic because it works like that it, it that's how the weberian bureaucracy uh, is supposed to work it is hierarchical i am not more i am not very worried about how bureaucracy works within i am worried about the interface between the bureaucracy and the public and where 
it shouldn't matter who is on the other side of the public and shouldn't also matter who is on this side of the bureaucracy you know it shouldn't matter either way provided we are able to come out with frameworks of legal framework you know of of course social reforms and all will also have to happen at the same time but at least legal framework if you are able to do it how did uh, how 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 did we find legal ways to do uh, put an entire state under detention for months altogether you know how how could we suspend internet how could we sus how could we find legal ways to cremate or burn a young girl's body against her family's wishes it just a few days back how we found a legal way to do it with through an order how could we do it I, I, you know whether it is illegal or not you know we are able to do it because it allows it allows it if somebody else was a district magistrate or somebody else was an sp probably it wouldn't have happened if this person becomes a dm or sp it would happen that shouldn't be the case it shouldn't be left uh, to the individual behavior individual characteristic individual upbringing of the officers it should be clear made clear that in this under this legal framework if you do if you go beyond when you interact with individuals beyond your rights there will be repercussions there has to be accountability on that and once that is decided i think we will find a more empowered citizenry in this country that's my submission may i say something yamin sir go ahead dr vikram singh uh, probably uh, i uh, would like to comment but yeah padmaja sham ma'am go ahead yes briefly i just want to say my my point was not about that i was precisely asking about this question that uh, what the, what is the bureaucracy's relationship with the elected representatives and uh, how much of uh, why is there this huge disconnect with the ordinary people and whatever is happening the blatantly illegal and uh, other things like uh, cremation of that girl in hatras or uh, uh, locking down an entire state the cases have been filed in supreme court which are not being heard so the entire political structure is able to prevail on various arms of the state and how is it that nobody no the um, the structures do not have their own systems of uh, challenging that whether it's um, associations of I ias ips or the legal fraternity how come there is nothing that there is um, they able to stand up and challenge this so that is that is that was precisely my question i know these things are happening for stan swami to get a bunch of straws to sip water he has to wait 20 days is is an amazing thing that i have ever heard i don't think anywhere in the world you can hear anything like this so what is it that is going on is my question that once you are in prison of course you are within the ambit of that system there are ias of ips officers there are police officers there are a whole staff of the jail there how come an old man doesn't get a bunch of straws for drinking water is my question that he has to appeal to a court of law for that that's all that's a, that's a simple question that the structures are so strong and so able to prevent uh, any kind of humanitarian response within the structure any kind of uh, connect empathy with the ordinary person just as in hatras the 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 structure can prevent all empathy to the towards the family how is it that uh, the uh, other uh, wings uh, other than the political structure how come the political structure is able to prevail on all these systems at once is so, my question so adding to that before i go to dr vikram singh i would like uh, this is a very interesting point uh, given by uh, Padmaja Sham, ma'am. I would like to add here uh, to Dr. Vikram Singh. Uh, he mentioned uh, his service as well as the erstwhile uh, politician. So I would like to ask him uh, whether he sees any difference in the bureaucracy functioning in today's context, whether it be hatras, whether it be uh, in case of uh, prisoners who are asking for straw and basic amenities, when the bureaucracy is not. having any empathy or sympathy uh, on a common human value on humanitarian grounds and uh, succumbing to what it looks like a political or executive pressure i would like to ask him in addition to what uh, padmaja shah is asking 
whether he uh, whether he sees any difference in po political class or the bureaucratic class comparing to his time as well as uh, in the current context dr vikram singh please go ahead and thank that, you dr jamil i would like to give one liners to the number of questions that have come up ms padmaja shaw first i see no valid reason for the arrest of father stan because i know what investigation is all about a person who is 83 years old who lives in rachi has nothing to do with bhima koregao has never been there in his life by that token if there something exists in my laptop or a computer none of us in this august gathering can be free from a malicious investigation show me the man and i'll show you the rules if this be the bottom life on investigation none of us that includes me you dr jamil ms shaw kanan and everybody would be an accomplice or a willing accessory to a crime under the uapa so let us not talk about an investigation supposed to be as sacred as the legal proceeding itself now coming to the level of politicians when i said that there were politicians who were the immediate successors of the freedom fighters i have worked with the likes of late lal bahadur shastri who said that when he resigned as the railway minister he said that in today's times i think i'll have to forego dal dal is a lentil soup that we prepare in our homes for dinner i don't have enough money to have either the vegetable or the dal we choose which one to prepare this is the state of the railway minister of this country and look at today a single mla has the capacity to feed seven generations of the biggest luxury that can possibly think of a single member of parliament the type of vehicles i have known that there are mlas and mps of those times who is to read ride bicycles and rickshaws and never could afford even a two wheeler today an mla a gram panchayat spends his election cost go into millions and millions of rupees 10 million mean the basic cost and then he gets it back from the people and when in his charge talking of the political interface now as ms padmaja shaw had mentioned i would be the first the interface is going from back to worse and the thing started in the mid 80s when politicians would come uh, i would like to since no translation can do justice to the original inko mere kshetra mein bhej de what do you mean by mere kshetra the entire area please depute these officers in my area you are allotting firearm licenses please at least make a quota for me that you will give 10% of arms license on my recommendation you will post 10% of the station house officers on my recommendation that this is an absolute nonsense fairy tale and this is not going to happen please understand that where the limits are and you should say it is like me asking you that please depute four or five of my nominees as your gram pradhan in your political party something as nonsensical and humbug as what your requests are making but i told them in so many words became extremely unpopular but they could crib they could go but as a person i felt that i had the confidence of the top political leadership they could only complain they could only uh, gossip that was the end of it now ms padmaja shaw also mentioned a very important point the feudal mindset the feudal mindset is here to stay old habits die hard this feudalism is built in our system and one of our telephone or least even today when he picks up the phone he you know how he would respond bangla shriman police adhikshak mahoday bahadur shri vikram singh ji aapka sevak ram prasad adesh there are four epithets before and four epithets behind and if i were to call my accountant and ask him accountant am i empowered to do this am i authorized to make a purchase of 10 lakhs of million rupees the answer would be in urdu huzur chahe to sab kuch kar sakte hain sir you can do anything in the process huzur will land up in jail when the audit party comes because huzur does not have the capacity to make any purchase beyond 50000 and the accountant is so servile so supine before the halo of the superintendent of police other thing by thinking huzur chahe to sab kuch kar sakte hain and even as madam said that the difference between one year is such that a person who is one year junior when he enters the office he will keep on standing till he is asked to sit down unless he is asked to sit down he will not sit down because the level and the compartmentalization said that the person who is one year junior he may have studied in stanford and i may be a failure from a third rate university of uh, somewhere but he will keep on standing and i can make him keep on standing but that is totally accepted but this feudalism then the association of course we have is association of course we have ips association but i dare say that their association only for the name sake 
show me the man and i'll show you the rules when was the last time that they took up a principled principled stand on anything when was the last time that they said that this is thus far and no further to my memory i don't think i can recall any single instance if mr gopinathan has any instance i would love to hear from him but as far as i know the institutions are there but they are only for the sake of cosmetics and window dressing thank you uh, now uh, mr kannan you want to respond yeah in the sense that i want to uh, request ma'am is actually wondering as to why they are not getting giving any straws i, I think you are raising this question because it is you know uh, uh, father stan saw me there are many such individuals who are arrested and who are in jail on a routine basis for no under trials just randomly picked up randomly picked up you didn't like the sho didn't like okay picked up and get it you know for and then we'll see what needs to be done later couple of days and this happens on a regular basis it's not that it doesn't happen yeah. it happens on a regular basis and what is the incentive for the officer to provide the straw what is the incentive you look at it from another point salary. of view is salary no salary is anyway he is going to get <laughs> whether he provides straw or doesn't public, straw doesn't public matter public money is funding that salary no it, see that is the thing uh, it is not so that is where i said the relationship has to be reestablished in the sense that that interaction at uh, that one to one interaction where a non powerful citizen knows not in power from any position in government vis a vis the person in power that and we were working on it in the sense uh, if you look at uh, uh, all those right based uh, framework legal frameworks which are happening it was on that direction we were not happy with the progress we were not happy with the pace but it was along that direction and then it got stopped it got stopped and it got you know it doesn't matter you know what people believe and need is delivery so you need to provide them cylinders you need to provide them toilets you need to provide them uh, x y z ration something so if you are as long as you are providing delivery the rights doesn't matter ma'am you said it is not right actually it is father stands on his right you know it's it is that precise that term and it is anybody's right it doesn't have to be father stands on your any it doesn't have to be anybody it can, you know, any can, person who is having an interaction as an example yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah. so i uh, stilling in the sense that it doesn't anybody and when the person believes that unless we create that incentive and also on the contrary let's say that incident happened in hathras or dr kapil khan's issue happened uh, and they were in the high court said no reasonable man could have issued such an order uh, the order for nsa and this is precise letter you know wording of the high court order so no reasonable person could have issued such order so if no reasonable person could have issued such order then you should further add one line that under what circumstances such an order was issued may be inquired into if there was one more such line then that precise yeah. officer would have next time when a direction comes to him he would have thought twice because he know that if i push this far then there is going to be some accountability which will come instead when it comes it does we were asked like so i i i have refused like sir was telling i have refused multiple times to send people under pasa nsa blah blah we won't do it so the question used to be from the political uh, what what is you have to lose so i used to say sir this is blatantly incorrect the high court would quash it so the answer would be so what then you release him after 6 months if the high court says release him you release him your salary or your promotion or your this is not that has nothing to do with that that is decided by me i am going to decide whether you are going where you are going to get the next posting what is your promotion what is your incentive whereas that accountability jurisprudence is one part where we need to work on systematically wherein where when there is an our reach from official officials and when there is an evident our reach at least an inquiry should be initiated and if that is done certain amount of rights in the sense of individuals rights i think we may be able to uh, work upon in the sense we may be able to yeah maybe sorry ah. <laughs> we got that so thank you uh, i think uh, somebody please mute yourself now i would like to invite uh, commodore lokesh patra uh please uh, go ahead and open the audio and give your opinion and if you have any questions to our speakers please uh, uh, commodore lokesh patra is a prominent rti activist please go ahead uh, lokesh patra ji okay. thank you dr jamil and thank you all of you 
there are few issues i think some mr kanan has touched it and uh, one query is i have for dr vikram singh you see with after every crime the easiest thing is not the transfer suspend i still want to know has anybody created a, or have a data that police personnel who are suspended have not come back with a promotion i have yet to see one or two who have gone out suspension is just an eye wash okay let let get me uh, we have already listened that there is a situation at the present moment is not good let's look at how do we go about it mr kanan has said you have certain rights right right to information right to food in other words like he said that officers are getting or people in position are getting pressure from the top now same thing is happening in these uh, who are supposed to give you information the officers they are also under the pressure let's face the facts today you don't even get the information what you like to have but we should not give up the point is we should not give up we should keep filing it and whatever little information you have it may matters and for your rights i think is a time has come that people must learn what are their rights most important is to create awareness what is bad is bad we know we should look forward rights are the very important yesterday a small uh, webinar i was attending large number of experts were talking of child right child should do this but my a one question was child right is whose right the child is a child who are the custodian of rights of the child because child rights starts from the time of birth it has to be parents it has to be a group it has to be teacher they are the custodian the child become major we keep talking of child rights so the question is when we talk of rights we must understand rights today is so difficult to get what excuses they find they might reply to but they take four months circumvent your rti like this morning i was sent a appeal though it was sunday a simple question where the officer who is supposed to give information like what we call central public information officer they put up a clause a b c which doesn't is not relevant whatsoever so i have taken a stand that is i only say very politely the cpi has add in his understanding of the right to information act you got to be now strong but still polite so these are the problem those who are asking for rights have to play around and uh, the other one they have found a easy way personal information that is under section 18j this has become a common problem after one of the decision given by the supreme court we talk of regulatory bodies tribunals how do they get elected now let's talk of election commission there has to be structure created for the selection process even in cic we had a selection proper structure was created by up government the selection new people will be given information we just had yesterday saturday yeah that was yesterday oath is being taken by the new commissioners can you believe the how the structure was broken a, a candidate who has not even filed application this is second time sir. they sel elect selected in spite of in fact last 6 uh, and 1/2 year i've been filing these cases in supreme court and high court till now we haven't appointed single information commissioner without being nudged by the court but now the courts are also reluctant they give you order we had a fabric today you will see dagan herald story in spite of orders from the supreme court of india how it is violated they said there will be no dilution and commissions will be kept at uh, equal with the election commission they read only two lines of that and they went about dilution today when we went for last supreme court in december your order when we say your order means honorable supreme court order has not been complied by government of india we had to listen for 15 minutes from the chief justice of india how the rtf is for misuse how is a blackmail here we are there for five, we filed a case of non compliance and yet to hear then another three months given for appointment now forget that the other day national commission of women you heard the chairperson talking going and meeting the governor of this 
The point is now you have the tribunal, you have the regulatory authority. We need to work on their selection process, go tough, keep, uh, uh, there has to be pressure from public and people like Ghana and Dr. Bikram Singh, because otherwise this case will continue. Somebody has to keep fighting and keep filing the right, your rights must be used even if you are not getting fully satisfied. It does happen, even if you see media, media is very reluctant to do stories. Unlike in 2005 to 2009, you should have small RTA and the media will publish. Today they don't publish. They're so scared and journalists tell me, sir, my editor will chala jayega if I do the same story. That's what happened. Very few are there. We have few of them, bold one, and some of them. Basically, that's a web media. Thank you so much. And uh, just think of this. How do you create awareness? Because judiciary also is becoming difficult to handle. So that's what I'm... I guess uh, uh, Commodore Lokesh Patra is pointing out uh, towards the point raised by Kanan that if an ordinary citizen is aware and asking questions, the right questions to whether it be bureaucracy or politicians or some, uh, some system, how effective it is considering the Indian context where the politicians play a huge role and they can undermine that ordinary citizen's rights and put him in troubles. So uh, I guess uh, Dr. Vikram Singh and Kanan can respond to Commodore Lokesh Patra. So Dr. Vikram Singh. Thank you. Words of profound wisdom from Commandant Lokesh Batraji. First, you mentioned about the suspension and the after effects of suspension, if any. You are absolutely right. In 99% of the cases, the suspensions are an eye wash. Rest assured, if you take a study of 10 years, you will find that 99% of the people are put under suspension, go back to the places with no impact whatsoever on the careers or the character roles. Few indiscreet persons, and myself included, during my tenure as DGP, I dismissed 555 persons. I remember the figures because I mean, if they say that you have to be cruel to be kind, there is no place for people who are deviants, people who are unfair to the general population, dishonest intellectually and moral, displaying moral turpitude. They need to be dismissed from service. And dismissal can come through two ways, not through suspension. If one is indeed serious about one's job, as Mr. Kanan Gopinathan had mentioned, Article 311 of the Constitution of India empowers a person for summary dismissal of any officer of any rank by the appointing authority. And this is one provision which I have resorted to. Then I, Commodore Lokesh Patra also mentioned the horrible fault lines that have emerged. Of course, there has to be a relentless battle to address these fault lines and to smoothen out the rough edges. Things are not going to come to us naturally. There has to be a resolute effort and a resolute group. And you are the salt of the earth and people like you are who are those who matter. Of course, I have never been, but I do feel that one comes across a sinking feeling, a feeling of utmost frustration, but that should <coughs> never be the case. We should continue. I also like you, sir. I sent articles to leading publications and time and again, I also have had the experience, sir, your articles are far too outspoken and do impact our comfort level, we will not publish them. Because so be it. I know you don't have the backbone enough. You are men and women of straw that you cannot take up things that are of concern to the people of this country for the general welfare of this country. If you choose to look the other way, that is a choice that you have taken. But you are very right, sir, that there are occasions, and I do find that 5% of my contributions are returned by the fact that there are two, two but perhaps outlandish and may not go well with the powers that be. Thank you. Dr. Kannan, you want to respond? Uh, no, I think it, it's a perfectly valid situation that, uh, you know, the, what validly described the current situation. Uh, during my UPSC period, yes, I was also trying to do some RTI, used to apply for RTI, and that has been my only experience of an RTI activist before entering the civil service. Uh, and once I got into the civil service, RTI became one of the most detested kind of a thing because uh, 
uh, everybody is trying to uh, you know create sort of and this kind of image was also created wherein uh, somebody is in you know is a habitual offender kind of a thing in 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 the police uh, terms like somebody would just file rti and you you are made to feel that these people are bad people just trying to do blackmail they are trying to create some sort of it's like an anti national feeling if somebody is questioning the government describe them as an anti national so that you can discount their views the easiest way to silence somebody is to discredit him so that became part of it and then i at some point i personally also realized that that I'm, i was also doing the same thing and i wasn't doing for any uh, extraneous thing but i i was asking for this information for a very valid reasons and so it changed but at the same time i still believe rta has been a very effective tool because even when the information is not released uh, let's say of a pm care fund or even you know many many it's many such instances wherein the information is itself not released at least that non release or arogya setu app or whatever be it that non release itself is bringing certain information out into the public uh, it's not just the information that is released the reasons quoted also is of some interest to the public as to they are quoting national security reason to uh, see whether you know what was the discussion that was went on to declare a lock lockdown so it was national security was a reason to decide whether you know the covid lockdown should have happened or not you know to ask when you ask for a file so this itself creates an interest and if we hadn't had this tool the rti tool i really wonder you know whether this period would have been much more darker in the sense we wouldn't have been able to see a lot of things so it is important that when uh, when in power when when it when it is possible we expand similar acts we we try to find out institutions and frameworks where there are, there are demand based solutions like rta is a demand based solution it is not up to an officer to decide whether i would like to give information or not it i have to respond to a demand are we able to work out such similar more demand based legal framework and how how much more we can do i think there we need to maybe work we were working a lot of I, like aruna roy and lot of people who working you yourself would have been lot of people who working at that point of time we again need to work on it and how do we and i think that is where i say that interaction between the individual and people in power with this expanding framework legal framework those interaction would again become little more egalitarian that interaction would become a little more uh, you know e equal and empowering for the citizen so i agree with you sir we need to fight whether we get the information we don't get the information that secondary uh, non non information is also of interest so thank you uh, i have some a uh, few fundamental questions uh, dr vikram singh uh, being a IPS officer, I would like to draw attention towards the uh, commonly talked UAPA Act. You know, we all know that this act has been used to detain many activists, Dr. Kafil Khan, now Umar Khalid, and other uh, Indian activists. So uh, there was an article in Opinion where it talked about um, you know this UAPA Act and uh, possibly. Uh, in contradiction to the freedom of speech and expression as mentioned in article 19 one freedom of assembly article 1 freedom to form association again article 1 and ultimately the right to life and human rights so this is going against that particular clauses of the constitution of india so as a former ips officer putting that into context i would like to ask you these acts when they were framed you know by this bureaucracy whether it be uh, civil services or the police services or any other uh, judicial uh, committees uh, which is given to the politicians of course politicians just uh, put a rubber stamp uh, and then enact the law because considering the quality of the politicians uh, you know uh, in the parliament right now uh, you know they are the, not the ones who probably come up with this kind of acts so do you think that this was um, you know as kanan was mentioning uh, finding a legal ways to do unethical things so how do you see the bureaucracy whether this is a fault of their professional training uh, which gotten deteriorated over time which lead this uh, officers to frame those laws which goes against constitution of india that's the number one question number two i would like to ask is does infiltration of any ideology people particularly now if i may use the word sanghi ideology people in this 
professional um, training or organizations which train the bureaucrats are playing a role in coming up with these hacks? And uh, are there any better ways uh, moving forward in, uh, in, cons in terms of uh, uh, training uh, these uh, bureaucrats? So I would like to uh, get answer from both of you. Uh, Dr. Vikram Singh, uh, please go ahead. You mentioned UAPA, Dr. Jameen Saab, and I would say that UAPA is very akin to the Patriots Act of the United States of America. Before this, we had the POTA and the TADA, which had inbuilt, structured, and inbuilt things that they can be taken care of. If one dis, I mean, was a malicious use of the POTA and TADA, there was a provision of imprisonment of that officer itself. UAPA lacks that. Then confession made before a police officer, again, was admissible in earlier acts. It is admissible in UAPA also. Preventive detention is the spirit of UAPA. It has been made more stringent, non-justiciable, and therefore it is that too much of discretion has been given to the investigating agency, which perhaps could be diluted and toned down. These allegations and the criticism of the UAPAs that it is far too draconian. There is very little interface with the judiciary. And the third, the administration and the administrative authority of the magistracy and the police is overbearing and that needs to be toned down. But this criticism being there and being used against unfairly as alleged in case of Dr. Kafil Khan, etc., this matter could go to the Honorable Supreme Court where it would be very interesting to see what decision is taken by the Honorable Supreme Court. Now coming to our training, our trainings are pretty robust and training both of all India service officers is such that there is very little scope of any philosophy infiltrating into the system because it is so structured. It is constitution of India, it is human relations, it is political science, it is drill manual, it is basically law subjects. The subject of philosophy has absolutely no place in the training of all India service officers. Philosophy comes in much later and when it comes and when it penetrates, that is, I would say that like the river Ganges coming from, the Gangotri is very pure. All the impurities start coming after maybe five or seven years of the induction of the officer when various kinds of disturbing philosophies come into the mind and start playing. But I do expect that officers are so highly, they're, they're the best of the best in the country and internationally. They would not subscribe or succumb to the venomous and the malicious philosophies, maybe of any kind. I would say they are true and they should be true only to the constitution of India and welfare of each and every citizen of India, irrespective of caste, creed, and religion. Thank you. Mr. Kannan, you want to respond? No, I agree uh, to, a, to a large extent what Sir has actually precisely mentioned on the legal status of UAPA. In fact, the bail itself has been made a little more uh, difficult under UAPA. Uh, but we need to understand that UAPA Certain amendments have happened during this government's period or the last couple of governments, but otherwise the UAPA was brought in during the previous uh, uh, period. So the act itself, you can't, uh, that is all, that also won't be justifying to say that everything that we are seeing and uh, an authoritarian tendency from the, uh, from the administration or the government per se, is not just an enabling provisions from today. It's not that. It has been always there. And that is also because uh, we we took a break when it came to a constitution uh, because we adopted a new constitution even though slightly in continuation with 35 and other things but whereas our laws continued much before that you know it continued from much before that and uh, substantive checks on each and every sections of each acts whether actually whether it should be this way or not has not been comprehensively taken it has been challenged when it comes to supreme court on various sections etc that has been done but not on a proactive basis kind of whether all these laws which are pre-independence laws whether it needs to be reworked upon on the basis of the fundamental rights because the acts were framed when we were subjects again i would come to that point the acts were framed when the Brit british rulers wanted to control Indian subjects or as protected people. And that was the premise on which those acts were framed. And after independence, we became citizens and the relationship changed because now the citizens are having inalienable rights. We have surrendered certain rights to the government. People have surrendered certain rights to the government, only certain rights on the condition that other rights would not be violated and not also without due process of law. 
only under that condition. So once that it has changed dramatically, we haven't seen that kind of a dramatic change in the legal framework, be it of most of these acts. And it's not just one act, you can take any number of acts uh, on that part. So again, uh, UAPA, uh, the, the, the balance, I think, as uh, you know, the national interest, the security, national security, and the individual right kind of a balance, it also has to do with what the nation feels at that point of time. So you would see a Supreme Court giving one judgment today and maybe five, 10 years later that Supreme Court giving us some completely different judgment on, 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 on similar issue. Uh, so it, I, it affects uh, ultimately institutions are also manned by individuals and uh, individuals have, I'm not saying they are, they, they are ingrained or they're trained in one way or the other. That's not the case. But generally individuals have, a, you know, we are individuals, they're not robots. So, so I, I will have certain political convictions, even though I am supposed to work with every government with equally committed way in a particular way, but I have my own personal beliefs and what is right and what is wrong. Every individual has that. And when it comes to decision making, and you will find that reflections also. But the point is this, just recently, again, I think Khalid Saifi's case was there, wherein the magistrate said that this is pure vindictiveness from the police. That's it. If the court is saying it is pure vindictiveness, the person has lost almost half a year. After that, what? You have, you, have, you have said that police has done, if it is pure vindictiveness, vindictiveness and taking action, if that's a crime, there should be further, further one more line to that. We are missing that one line, uh, that if it is pure vindictiveness, action may be initiated against the investigation officer for doing that. And that one line is missing is, is what I feel in most of our judgments. And if you're able to inbuild that, it shouldn't be that it should be left to the discretion of the courts to say whether it should be added or not at least one line as to whether it is malafide or bona fide should be inquired into. If that one line is at least added, it would have a bit of a bit of check and ba balance to a, lot of, to a lot of us, I think. So uh, that brings a fundamental question to both of you. Uh, Mr. Uh, Vikram Singh has pointed out that with the changing governments, a framework is given. The laws are still there, whether it is going against the Constitution of India is a subject, again, uh, of a discussion on another level. But the enforcement of those laws with the changing government and the function of bureaucracy. Why I'm bringing this is we have seen successive governments not enforcing these particular laws with vigorous force when compared to the other governments. Of course, the government in power now. So the implementation of those laws are done by bureaucracy. So when the framework is provided, how do you see this bureaucracy in total accepting that framework, whether you still see any hope moving forward in particularly in current Indian political context where the activists are detained and then after two or three months, the judgment comes against, but they languish in jails for that particular time period and then you know that is lost for them. So I would like to take that quick reaction from both of you, and then we will go to chat questions. Dr. Vikram Singh. Thank you, Dr. Jamil Shah. I will give you a legal answer first. This UAPA, we may disagree with the various provisions of UAPA, but the fact of the matter is, it is a law passed by the Parliament of India, and therefore it has a legal relevance and a legal sanctity. If we also have a vibrant judiciary, but uh, one may have reservations that I personally went to the Supreme Court requesting that during the case of the COVID pandemic, frivolous cases under 188 of the IPC for violation of 124, there was migration and the Supreme Court honorable with due respect and deference, I salute the Supreme Court, summarily brushed aside by PIL and said, I don't know what vested interest the petitioner has. But the same petition was upheld in four different high courts. Four different high courts, as Mr. Karan Govind, the same, either those four high courts are wrong or somebody else is wrong, or perhaps I'm not in my senses, but the fact of the matter is that there is basic contradiction and I will stop at that with the greatest of respect to our court. We have a vibrant judicial system, but again, I would say that it is impossible for a total miscarriage of justice happen, but these fault lines and every single case that you mentioned, Kafil Khan and others, is a cause of very great concern and is a cause for in, uh, interop, introspection for all of us. Why? Because a preventive detention unsettles not an individual, but a family, a system, and question marks 
the total credibility of the administration, the onerous responsibility on the district officers who invoke the provisions of the UAPA will have to be accountable not only to the constitution, but to their own conscience. At the end of the day, they say that they have faithfully implemented the provisions and the preventive detention is in the public interest and in the interest on law and order. Nothing that is frivolous and on the dictates of the political powers that be is going to serve the purpose of the administration. Thank you. So Mr. Kannan, you want to respond? Yeah, I think I'll be a little more frank than uh, sir on this. Uh, I, I resigned because I had uh, certain concerns with the way Supreme Court was taking those cases, especially with respect to what was happening in Kashmir. Uh, and when habeas corpus petitions are not listened, uh, taken, or when uh, people are being arrested, and you know, it, it, it's a belief in our own judiciary, you know, because I'm a bureaucrat, I'm not supposed to be talking to you, because I'm, I am supposed to do and uh, be in my position and do my job, you know, that's what, why I cleared the exam, that's what I'm supposed to do. That is, provided that you have a feeling that everybody else is also doing their job. And if you feel that no, certain things are more important at a particular point of time, and despite whatever you have to face or whatever you have to leave, that's when I felt when habeas corpus petitions were not being listed, when 15 days were being given to people like, you know, when let's say Shah Faisal was detained and gone, judiciary was telling that, no, I'll, we'll, we'll, ask, we'll give 15 days for the government of India to respond. That's when I felt suddenly maybe uh, the Supreme Court is more than willing to accept the arguments of the government of India. We have a judiciary not to side with the government. We have a judiciary to side with the people against the government. That is precisely the reason we have judiciary. It is the check, uh, you know, they have judges are being paid and kept in this position to protect the rights of individuals. That is a primary function. And when the, the judiciary feels that rather it is more important to act in government's favor, you know, let's, let's say there are a hundred people who are on one side, but if one person's right is violated, I cannot go to the government to ensure that right, but I should have that faith that I can go to the judiciary to ensure that right, because that is what they're supposed to do, that one person's right. And that, when I felt it didn't happen, look at the migrant crisis. Sir was telling that he went to the PA, means no other place in the world I would have seen the kind of migration that happened in India during COVID. Uh, and they were not protesting. Why again, I'll come to subject as a citizen. They were asked to stay back to the places where they were staying. Say, let's say you're a migrant from Bihar and staying in Mumbai, uh, but, and you will not be staying in very cozy kind of a situation. But if you have been to any construction site, you will see the places where a construction worker is staying. He would be staying in tin sheds, at least 20 tin sheds, and then there will be a shared toilet and there will be a shared kitchen space because it's a temporary accommodation. But that's where they say stay when they come for a construction work. When they're staying there, you the what the government has said, okay, you cannot go back. You have to stay where you are. What happens? Because it's a congested space, your chances of infection increases. It's your sharing uh, shared toilets and kitchen, your chance of infection increases. You also don't have any support system, community, government-wise, nothing there. And when these people decided, they didn't protest. If they were citizens, they would have protested. They would have said, how can you ask? In my own country, it's their country. It's your country, right? It's, it's in their own country. They are not being allowed to go back to their home. That's okay, you know, if provided they are given some food, they are given some, if that is also not done, they just walked 1000 kilometers, 1200 kilometers people have walked. I've met people going from here to Allahabad. Al 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 They're asking this road goes to Allahabad, we'll go to Allahabad from Mumbai. And not only that, it's we found ways to beat them up. The migrant workers were going from Mumbai to Allahabad at every state border if they were trying to come together in one way, we did lati charge. There are many instances of lati charge being done on people, our own citizens, who were troubled by the lockdown because they were not getting food and water and support in their places. And they were just walking back to their homes. They were not protesting. They were not doing anything else, just walking back to their homes. And we found ways to beat them. And when that we can, you know, close our eyes, shut our eyes and see how oh, it happens, you know, in the larger frame of system, it happens for the for the good of the larger thing, it happens. Then I think there is something seriously fundamentally wrong. And I, this again needs to be checked as to how come judiciary has become so willing to listen to the government, but not to the other side. Judiciary is supposed to be more scrutinizing, uh, much more scrutinizing towards the government than towards an, uh, an individual. I think uh, these questions have to be raised because these have an impact. Uh, 
uh, when when individuals of repute uh, when in, on, in respected positions and uh, when they write this when they express this it definitely has an impact on the uh, judges because they are also individuals they also understand that maybe we are also getting scrutinized we are also being judged we are also being looked upon and criticized and that also has to happen a little more openly uh, i think that is the way one of the ways at least to uh, improve uh, collectively uh, as a nation thank you uh, kanan and uh, now i would call upon zoya mahween to take up the chat questions zoya please go ahead Yes, sir. So here, Mr. Nair asks, as uh, Dr. Vikram Singh has commented, that uh, uh, the public representatives, or uh, maybe the Legislative Assembly or, or the MPs, they have disproportionate assets. So how are we going to uh, solve this? How are we going to get rid of these corrupted people in the government who are representing us? Zoya, thank you very much. Every criminal gives the, an opportunity to the, the law enforcement agency to give, take a strict action. Take the example of Kuldeep Singh Singer, MLA from Unnao. Take the examples during my course as the DGP and otherwise that I, it was my painful duty to send to jail two honorable ministers, two members of parliament and three MLAs. This is the record of just two and a half years. Where there is a will, there is a way. If you decide to take action on the basis of criminal antecedents and also on the basis of incontrovertible evidence. Kuldeep Singh Singer's case is a true example of the ding-dong style and the seesaw thing that happened. Innocent, not so innocent, innocent, guilty, and it was ultimately for the CBI to finalize the case and put him behind bars. I know it is an uphill task, it is a difficult task, but this is the painful duty for which an honest and the straightforward bureaucrat is there. Where there's a will, there is a way. And always, I would my advice to officers would be that all such cases should be conducted by specialized state agencies like the Economic Offenses Wing, as in the case of Gayatri Prajapati Uttar Pradesh still in jail, as in the case of other MLAs and MPs conducted by the state CIC, CID and also by the vigilance department. Conducting such investigations at the level of the police station may not be prudent because the investigator who himself may be of the rank of an inspector of police may turn hostile, may connive or may be complicit with the accused. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next question is from Mr. Narsing Mamin Law. He asks, the officers who are crossing the legal framework are not made accountable and there's no punishment to the officials acting. The example in Hatra's case, but will those officials be punished as per departmental procedures? No, it does not happen. That is the pathetic situation. Please comment on this. Any of the panelists would take the lead. Mr. Okay. Khanan? Yeah, sir. Uh, so I think, uh, yeah, I, I think I've taken this example uh, and my concern is also exactly this. Uh, and you would also find, it's not only this, that uh, you would not often find bureaucrats also coming out and criticizing issues while they are in service, it, not even in uh, WhatsApp groups or not even in, uh, you know, internal uh, criti criticize, criticism also. Because we also at times behave as sort of a, of a, of a collective wherein we are there to protect each other and we are supposed to protect each other and that that becomes and how to further uh, our own so let's say if an IAS IPS then IAS IPS becomes one of the key you know equations on which a lot of decisions are taken whether the power should go to the DM or it should go to the SP how the time the discussion happens around this so a lot of these things becomes around very petty issues and on self-serving issues uh, if let's say 100 people are on uh, along with the officers of the SP or the DM and in, 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 a, in a group, and I don't think anybody in that group would have felt comfortable about what happened in Hathras. Forget about accountability from the judiciary or from the bureaucratic point of view. We, we, we know that's not happening. But at least a social or a kind of a friendly advice coming to that, whether it was correct or not, even that wouldn't happen. 
uh, because we feel that he is in a tough position. He, we should all be standing with him. We shouldn't be questioning him. We should all be standing with him. That is the underlying assumption by which we sort of rationalize everything. We rationalize and we accept that, okay, it's a mistake. It's another mistake kind of a thing. And we go on ac accepting this. Th these, are, these are issues which happen in every organization. It's not just in bureaucracy. And these are also where in every field that we need to come together to save ourselves rather than you know be fighting amongst each other. Uh, that is why external systems are more important. External systems, external checks and balances become more of a uh, effective thing that rather than internal mechanisms. Again, uh, I think uh, we need to work upon and we need to create awareness on the accountability jurisprudence part. In the sense, if that we are able to push, and if it is not left to the judiciary, rather if judiciary, along with whenever it comes on an overreach from the government official. The judiciary is mandated to comment, mandated to comment as to whether further inquiry on the officer's uh, thing is required or not. Yes or no. Just that much part and yes or no thing. I think even that much, if you are able to put it, put it up, a lot of checks would happen. Of course, it will be, it will put a lot of pressure on the bureaucracy. It will put a lot of pressure on the police officers, also to uh, be very cautious while taking actions. They might not take a lot of brave actions, bold actions uh, at times, because they might see that the court might hold them up later. But I think that's the direction we need to go to. We need to find ways to be effective while still being under an accountable uh, frame, democratic framework. It cannot be that we can be effective, we can be bold only when there is nobody questioning us. That's, that's not bold, that's not being effective anyway. Thank you, sir. The next question is from Mr. Abdul Hamid. He says, to achieve higher levels of governance, we need a more effective political system, elected leaders in the country where development is the sole agenda and 0% of influencing bureaucrats by elected political leaders. Can we expect this in future? Because today politics has become a most profitable profession in Indian context. Please comment on this. With your permission, Kanan, may I? So please go ahead, sir. Yes. Thank you very much. I am an optimist, but this is one question of which I am not optimistic about at all. I would be living in a fool's paradise if I were to say the answer in the affirmative. The way the steep decline has happened in the last 10 years, it is like a kid that somebody is already in the ICU. And I expect a miracle to happen in the next five years that that person comes out of the ICU and runs the marathon and gets the gold medal. It is as almost the same on the line that your question is, Mr. Hamid, that what silver lining or rainbow can we see in the horizon? At least I see no rainbows in the horizon as of now. The current structure and look at the amount, the number of criminals that we have in every house of the elected representatives, almost 50% have serious crimes alleged against them. And there are two things that happen very naturally. One, when it comes to enhancing their own pay and allowances, there is total unanimity cutting across all party lines and everybody vote for the fact in increasing their allowances and areas unanimously. And the second is when it comes to the fact that something happened, that all those with criminal antecedents should be debarred from politics, that has not happened and that is not likely to happen in the foreseeable future. And I do hope that I answer have answered your question, Mr. Hamid, with a note of ground reality and not misplaced optimism. So I would like to, uh, because I think I don't have an option than to be optimistic here, uh, because we are a very young nation. We, we are a very old civilization, but we are a very young democratic nation. And it's just been 60 years, 70 years, as, and we are learning. Uh, and as we learn, we are bound to make it. It is not a very linear nation. I don't think countries have a very linear progression like in bureaucracy. You know, you enter and then you become a stage by stage. It's a very, uh, you go somewhere, then you take a dip. You find a lot of uh, disruptions happening during that period. Then people somehow find uh, some reactions would come to it. Let's like a 77, an emergency which happened at 74, 75 emergency which happened. It was not linear. It happened, then certain things happened, then people reacted to it. And again, we came back on a path which was a little more democratic uh, in that way. It also has to do a lot with how we teach our own younger youngsters as to what it is about to be in politics. We have 
we have somehow convinced that discussing politics is wrong and politics in itself is wrong politics in itself is kind of a immoral thing uh, this is again where we need to rework on our communication we need to learn how to discuss politics in a more agreeable format in the sense we need to learn how to disagree in a more agreeable way and once we are able to do that if, and it can start with schools it can start with school curriculums as to how to debate without name calling uh, without character assassination without uh, what about re how do we disagree if we start at least with school education we can create a lo lot of youngsters who would come out and join politics with a little more uh, conviction with little more i i have in this last Six months I, I, after my resignation in from August, I was really disappointed and disheartened when I put in my papers because I felt there was all around silence, which could be misplaced again. But I found that and I resigned. And from August to March, I must have traveled to 18 states, 18 or 19 states, and 65 districts uh, in the country. And youngsters, so passionate uh, and so committed, so, and doing work day in and day out in every all of these places. And they're all very silent workers and they have commit, put their entire life to this work. It was amazing to see and I can't help but be optimistic uh, about the country, uh, about the politics, about our own future. Uh, but we need to fight. Uh, it's a phase. This is a phase. And we will come out of this phase provided uh, we put in the effort, I think. Uh, and we will. I'm, I'm pretty sure we will. So I will bring in here uh, Jim Holland. Uh, he's our uh, active member of the Indian Americans Forum. After listening to those speeches, I would like to get his opinion in comparison to the West bureaucracy. So Jim, if you can open your mic and give a, a brief, uh, you know, yeah. I yeah. Want right. to if you may, uh, Jim. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a real honor to, to listen to both of you. Um, so thank you very much for that. Um, really impressed and, and, uh, humbled. I, I imagine that the bureaucracy is full of people who see one of you two gentlemen when they look in the mirror, but but maybe don't uh, don't always manage to live up. But uh, I'm, I'm honored. Um, the, the thing that I, I studied a little of this in uh, the, the context of other political uh, contexts, um, Soviet politics was my field, and uh, the the problem there was always that uh, there was what what was what they called in the West the double bind. You're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. You must accomplish the the tasks set before you, but you must not violate the regulations. And there's no way to do both. So people, even if people who are well-meaning are faced with this, do I, do I fudge the reports to show that I've uh, accomplished what I haven't, or do I break the rules to accomplish what I can? And it's, uh, it's a corrupting force. I mean, people who begin with the best of intentions find themselves um, doing things they wouldn't have, have done. What? Um, and there, there are similar tales from, uh, or, or research from Latin America, from Mediterranean Europe, uh, um, in, in U.S., uh, typically it's city politics where this happens most often, uh, local level people. But do you, do you find the, uh, the, the same phenomenon there of, um, uh, not, not so much trying to find legal ways of doing illegal things, but trying to resort to illegal means to do legitimate tasks. Um, and, and what do you do when, uh, when you're confronted with that? Yeah, so Kanan, uh, I guess, uh, okay. that you've uh, flipped uh, whether the yeah. bureaucracy is taking illegal means to fulfill the needs of an ordinary citizen. That's well put, Jim. I think that's a flip question to Kanan, so you can respond. I, I think half of our movies on bureaucracy and police are exactly that. Uh, you take any movie, uh, any film, any, uh, you know, uh, 
a singham or you know a, what whatever you know dabang or whatever movies that you take uh, you would find uh, precisely that wherein the system is so suffocating with the rules and with the regulations with you know so many things that a well meaning person is unable to circumvent all those parts and to do things like uh, 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 sir was telling about initially that whether he was when he was asking an accountant whether he has uh, you know something beyond 1000 rupees because that 1000 rupees wouldn't be allowing him to make do anything in in that particular thing but that there is a rule so how does it become the accountant says kuzur aap chahe to jo bhi kar sakte you know whatever you can do it's up, it's completely up to you and there are a lot of people who do it uh, that is where a lot of bona fide thing also comes in whereas you know if you have done something in the interest of the uh, interest of interest of the public and that is where a little bit of training also comes in uh, this is something you are taught very actively in the academy that if you are doing something going beyond uh, the legal things and to do for good reasons then you need to take certain checks you need to ensure that certain kind of uh, uh, things are done in place kept in place the files are kept in such and such way so that tomorrow it doesn't come back to you uh, on this way or that way uh, it, it becomes a little more uh, tough in bureaucracy in the sense of a ias kind of a thing because a lot of things are on file uh, i think it's a slightly more uh, you know wider bandwidth maybe in policing but, but sir may be able to better comment on that uh, this it does happen it does happen and more often than not it is appreciated and this is where it, uh, you know once you start doing this thing wherein you start playing in the gray areas of uh, what is good what is for the public good now it depends on what your conviction of of public good is also and second what is it that the your political leaders feel is for the public good okay because the political leaders are also having a mandate they are also having a majority mandate so it it will be very naive to say whatever they feel is bad only what i feel is for public good when they say it is for not public good then and when i start violating when i start taking that gray paths to do for public good then another public good would be asked because i have already taken those paths before now it's difficult for me to deny those paths to be taken the other thing because that is where the difference is Uh, and they would immediately come and say also see there you have done already you have done this so all it's not that i cannot take action on you on that i am just asking you to do you have done for x you do it for y why it's it's not a big thing uh, it's the same thing i am just saying the target is different so when that happens it becomes slightly difficult but it does happen uh, it does happen and a lot of us in uh, in our own enthusiasm and in fact it happens uh, more in the initial years wherein we are really Uh, enthusiastic and we have come with a lot of passion to change things and we find that all these rules are just there not you know we find the rules as enemies we find the laws as enemies you know these are all there to cripple us you know not letting us do what we want to do we just want to change our country in like uh, two minutes and then this is not letting us do and then we find our ways to do it and sooner or later we realize uh, the folly behind it and then slightly start taking uh, a little more conservative approach Uh, to to governance, uh, but I think I would I would love to listen to uh, Sir on this. That what has been his experience? Before uh, uh, before uh, Mr. Vikram Singh speaks, I want to add that brings an important perspective, uh, which Kanan brought forth. So, Sir, before you comment on that question, I would like to add this question to you so that you can respond to both. We have seen sometimes politicians and the bureaucrats ending up uh, in. Uh, you know misdemeanor or unethical practices and ending up in jails later on you know both of them were um, given or meted out a different treatment than the ordinary activists who are trying to change the system trying to create awareness so when it comes to politician and bureaucrats even if the accountability is meted out by some system which uh, officers like you or the fair officers act upon they end up in trouble for few months and then they later on they get released however the same is not the case when it comes to activist uh, whether it be you know all the activist who are in in prison right now or uh, being given bail or so and so on and so forth so why do you see that difference dr jamil i see the difference because again show me the man and i'll show you the rules often not always but very often that is the case i'll give you three examples one the coal scam the most horrible scam that the nation has seen 
the 2G scam, which involved the jailing of the ministers, the bureaucrats, and then look what happened. Ultimately, they were nailed, and also the bureaucrats and the senior most bureaucrats of the country's secretaries to government of India, where the telecom secretary, the coal secretary, they had to go to jail. The ministers had to go to jail. And no other than the important ministers were in jail for quite, not for a few weeks or months, but for years together. Then today we have the Kerala gold case, again, in which senior most officers of the state and also the political individuals are also. But again, what happens within the confines of the jail is a matter of debate. Agreed, there are classes A and B depending upon what the qualification and the social standing of the accused are. But then they are not judiciously applied. And in fact, every prisoner today is relegated to class the lower category, that is category B. And very seldom do you find a person, whatever be his social status or age or medical infirmity, seldom getting a superior class. But again, you must have heard of what happens in many of the North Indian jails, that those of the politicians who are still in jail hold court, run their empires of crime from within the confines of the jail. For them, the jail manual is what they want and not what the jail manual says. And I will stop at that because the word to the wise is enough, because no point in beating around the bush or not coming to the point. Thank the you. rule of law is by far the best legacy one can leave for the younger generation. That is easier said than done. Kanan Gopinathan has mentioned Dabang Singham. I will mention another name, Ganga Jal of Bihar, in which the then superintendent of police blinded no fewer than 50 people because they were anti-social criminals. Then again, we have a new terminology which the dictionary will not have, encounter experts. Encounter experts, any encounter that has to happen within the ambit of law, why the provisions of section 96, 206 of the Indian Penal Code and section 40 of the Criminal Procedure Code and not because of whimsical reasons. You go to the YouTube, Dr. Jamil, and you will find a series of people who are narcissistic and dressed up like somebody like a Rambo, that they are encounter specialists and holding an AK-47 and planting themselves. A bureaucrat is supposed to be self-effacing, to work from behind the curtains, not to have a larger than life self-image of a narcissist. If that be the case, then that officer requires psychiatric intervention and he has no business to don a uniform. And I certainly deprecate the cult of encounters and especially any encounters that is not within the ambit of law. We committed so many follies in Hathras and other cases. They were best avoided and they were totally avoidable. I do hope that the fault lines are addressed and addressed at breakneck speed and on topmost priority. Thank you. Uh, Zoya, you have any chat question, then we will have uh, closing remarks by both our guest speakers and then I will have a conclusion statement and then vote of thanks. So we'll wind up in 10 minutes. Yes, so sir, we have two last questions. The first one is from uh, Mr. Hassan Riyaz. He's saying the examples of Mr. Gopinath and Dr. Singh are inspirational and salutary, but these are exceptions. The so-called steel frame is populated by men and women of straw. What the corrupt political class and the supine and obsequious bureaucracy is doing is treachery against the state. The road we have taken is headed to the cliff. What can be done to turn the situation around? To the youngster first. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I wouldn't say exceptions. Uh, I, I don't think it will be fair to say exceptions. There are people, many, many, many are there who are working very honestly, very very earnestly uh, towards the same goal as uh, at least I would consider, you know, what I am trying to do by resigning. And then now, because I resigned as a, as a matter of statement, now I'm trying to do something which can be done uh, from the outside. I'm trying to do whether it will be possible or not. But there are so many people who are trying to do that on a day-to-day uh, -day basis. Uh, but again, it shouldn't be, my con contention is that it shouldn't be left to the individual uh, characters or characteristics or or whether they are whether they are good individuals or not it shouldn't be left to that it shouldn't be left to the bureaucrats it's you know as to how the relationship between the governed and the uh, government should be it shouldn't be left to them 
because people would come some people would come like this some other would come the next day and if it is left to them then we are already uh, not in a very good state how we can work upon it is a framework as a narrative that needs to be uh, further explored in I, I i definitely see rti as one of the major landmark landmark changes in that journey uh, uh, which i uh, second part is that uh, where you're saying that we are uh, what we are doing is treachery against the state and the road we have taken is headed to the cliff uh, yes it is tough uh, it is the same bureaucrats who have found and read the constitution, uh, who would have framed the Citizenship Amendment Act also. Uh, the who would have. Uh, it's not that uh, it's 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 somebody else. It's the same same people who have trust, who have faith, uh, who would have tried to circumvent as to how certain things can be done this way or how certain things can be done that way. Because we are also uh, you need to see. If you start questioning, then uh, the politicians also would try to see. Okay, he is a person of. Uh, character that also means that he should not be given certain positions, you know, uh, certain positions where we need. And this is a long journey. In the in the long journey, everything gets balanced. You will be here, you will be there, and everything gets balanced. But at certain time, they will try to find out those malleable kind of individuals so that certain works uh, can be got done. But it will be unfair to mark an entire bureaucracy because the lot of individuals who are there working and and in a tremendous uh, work pressure kind of environment and trying to do whatever little they can to stop this you know uh, 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 the way to help them is to not to leave it up to them the way to help them fight this better is by creating frameworks where it is not left it is not left to them to stand up and say no i will not do it it is to find ways wherein they won't have to say that because that question shouldn't be shouldn't come at all they, it should be very well done, or at least they would be able. They should be able to answer that it's not that I don't want to do it, but if I do it, I'll be punished. Let's say the officer, the district magistrate who issued an order such as completely blatantly violative order, is taken to task in the sense by an inquiry, by a suspension, or a one 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 single order from the judiciary. What the message will go to the rest everybody is that. There is pressure from the bureaucracy, from the political leaders, as to do something which could be, which can be wrong, and which you know is wrong. I can do it. If I don't do it, I'll be transferred, or I'll be taken out somewhere, or something else will be done by the government. But if I do it, then the judiciary or the accountability mechanism would kick in, and again I would be put in a difficult spot. Now that's the best place to put a bureaucrat in because now he has to find out. He, a bureaucrat, bureaucrat is the best rational individual. He would try to find out if I do this, this government might try to do something to me. But I know that this government is every government is for five years. Another government would come in another five years. So I don't want to risk my 35 years for just one government. But if I don't, if I go ahead and do it, and judiciary comes or some other accountability mechanism comes and puts in a permanent mark on my career, then maybe that's something I would like to avoid. And if we are able to work on those frameworks and make it a little more easier for the bureaucrats also to say no to wrong things, I think I think we may be able to uh, stop not only from the cliff. You know, when when a vehicle is going to the, uh, we know that it is going to the cliff. The best thing to do is to wake up the driver. Uh, you know that boss, don't sleep. Uh, we are going to the cliff. And and through conversations, through conversations across that, what we do is to raise voice and and somehow wake up that driver who is probably sleeping. And say that the bus is probably taking a turn towards the cliff. So let's let's stop and find a better way. So yeah, we are done with the chat questions. We have a last question, sir. Yes, go ahead. This is from Padmaja, ma'am. She is asking. Of late, many states, gov state governments like Telangana, are not putting geos on the government websites. This used to happen routinely. Much of the information that used to be in public domain has gone off public view. Are there any mechanisms to ensure transparency of mandated information at least? If the governments refuse to comply with RTI acts, what is the remedy? Should I take that, sir? OK. Uh... Ma'am, I think this was supposed to come under the proactive disclosure uh, of the RTI Act, but proactive disclosure has been put very much on the back burner because uh, 
we as i said we were on a direction of transparency and right based governance uh, uh, that got stopped that direction itself got stopped somewhere around 2014 and we said that is not the journey that is more important to indian people the journey is of delivery so this transparency is not so much of importance this accountability rights these are all faltu ke term terms you know it doesn't make any sense these are these are not of of any uh, so so you will see that journey back the the remedy for there is no remedy against mandatory uh, there are certain things which are mandatory public dis- should be mandatorily publicly disclosed on that you can definitely approach the cpios there but other than that a lot of disclosure which is on the government were proactive disclosures which was sort of discretionary on the government uh, government side on that the only way to go about is to file an rti and seek uh, whether uh, that information and if the rti through it doesn't happen then there is a whole uh, uh, set of sequence of actions where you can appeal uh, and then further to the cic and you know uh, the commission and that kind of a ladder is there where it can be escalated uh, but the proactive disclosure it will happen if there are demand if there are let's say a thousand people uh, write to a particular ministry or the department secretary and saying that uh, these geos needs to be put out on the public maybe that might happen and if there is a little more pressure that can happen uh, on that then this will definitely keep on happening and we, we need to also measure uh, we have once we made rti but we did not make any any measurement standards on rti as to whether how the department is doing on an rti parameter whether whether they are proactively disclosing whether the rti has been informed uh, uh, information has been provided timely is there any way to incentivize uh, uh, transparency those kind of frameworks we have not probably worked on to and that is a direction and that is a uh, framework again we need to work on once we all agree that that is the direction you have to go right now the the clear cut feeling is that this is the right based framework is not the way uh, it is delivery uh, you know delivery is more important for delivery it's a top down model i will say how to do uh, make uh, systems in place so that there are no leakages uh, whatever is sent from the top reaches to the bottom uh, it should reach to the bottom but they shouldn't ask i will give you can't ask so that is the that that is a relationship which is towards which we are going uh, almost every single uh, subject is now a beneficiary also be it of mudra loan be it of uh, kisan 2000 rupees in every 3 months all this happens is also it it sort of uh, disempowers the citizen from asking question it's like you having you are having an uncle uh, who put he gives you 3000 rupees every 3 months so even if he does a couple of wrong things you will not ask any question because you know that the uncle is giving you 3000 rupees or 5000 rupees whatever is that uh, as a pocket money so you would say hey, it's okay uh, you know uh, i will i will shut my eyes to a lot of things that he is doing that relationship also maybe uh, need to be worked on i am not sure whether i have answered maybe komodo might be able to give a better answer on that so uh, i think komodo is not here but that's a valid question and now we will go towards the conclusion if zoya is finished with the chat questions we will go to dr vikram singh uh, first for a 1 to 2 minute conclusion remarks uh, as to how he thinks uh, the things should move forward in terms of jamil the- i'm sorry to interrupt i had sent so uh, please uh, uh, give me 1 minute and then uh, after that uh, mr kanan will speak and uh, uh we will go for conclusion so dr vikram singh please go ahead so please uh everybody mute yourself thank you very much dr jamil and learned panelists and the distinguished participants it has been a great experience there is thesis and there is antithesis and from that emerges synthesis i am sure this fruitful discussion will not go in vain there are some to us take away from the discussions that we had of course the bureaucracy is made of men and women of steel barring a few exceptions the black sheep are everywhere and found to be in every organization there are the good there are the bad and the ugly but today i still feel that the 99% of indian bureaucracy are men and women of absolute steel of unimpeachable integrity but the horrific figure is that even if 1% plot line because there are certain factors where even 99% marks are fail marks unless it is 10% one has failed and bureaucracy is one such situation where it has to be sent person and 99% also is fail marks uapa and other statutes require a lot of fine tuning evolution judicial scrutiny so that the concern of the people the concern of every single indian is addressed 
that it is not whimsical, it is not knee-jerk, it cannot be malicious. And if there is a malicious prosecution, there is doctrine of judicial remedy, and there must be a remedy as far as any malicious profit. Then also, the problem of punishment of the delinquents, whether it is Hathras or elsewhere, one should not get the feeling that one is above the law and there is no law that is applicable to the bureaucrat. A bureaucrat jolly will answer. If he has been caught on the wrong foot, he jolly will pay the price also. The country demands and the poor people. I'm sure the bureaucracy will not fail the society. Bureaucracy will not fail India. To that extent, I'm extremely optimistic. May God always bless your path. Thank you very much. Kannan, Kannan you want to give your conclusion remarks? I think uh, sir has concluded quite uh, well. Uh, my only thing is that uh, we need to be conscious of the journey of every individual and uh, from 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 of a subject to a citizen and it should happen whether whether or not this bureaucracy is willing or not to have, you know enable that and for that uh, the movement a lot of changes rti did not happen because the government officers felt it need to happen rti happened because there was demand from the public there was demand from the movements outside the uh, you know uh, government and it was in response to that movement and rti happened so certain acts wherein the government and the individual relationship is uh, changed that will have to happen through movements outside of the government and there are a lot of interactions like this would be of great use and that's all from my side thank you uh, so much uh, for this opportunity and uh, that's all thanks Thank you so much. I will give my conclusion remarks on behalf of Indian Americans Forum. First of all, I'd like to thank you. Word of thanks is coming on the way, but um, uh, you know, I appreciate uh, both of uh, the guest time here. In conclusion, Indian Americans Forum is an NRI based activist group. We believe that Indian bureaucracy uh, can be um, optimistic as uh, Kanan was mentioning. We are all optimistic people and we see that change is coming. So we want to ask the Indian bureaucracy and the establishment, whoever is watching our program, to maintain the honesty, integrity, and professionalism as highlighted by one of our guest speaker, Dr. Vikram Singh. Um, and also the one-liner punchline, which Mr. Kannan has added, please do not find any legal means to do unethical and illegal things. Uh, the framework can change, the politicians come and go, the executive change, they, that could be the uh, thing, but uh, the constitution of India should be the main framework which all the Indian bureaucracy should act upon. Um, it's a very strange dimension now with uh, biased media influencing the bureaucracy. We would like to appeal to the Indian bureaucracy and establishment to not get swayed away with the biased media in taking the judgments and the pronouncements and uh, maintain the honesty, integrity, professionalism, and ethical standards. We ask all the IAS, IPS officers association to improve upon the training. And when they sit on the panel of enacting laws with the politicians, please be considerate of the constitution of India. Don't get swayed away when they make this kind of a loss, particularly UAPA, which goes against the basic um, articles of the constitution, particularly freedom of assembly, freedom of expression, freedom of speech. With these few words, in the interest of time, I would like to conclude um, hoping that Indian democracy will be strengthened. India as a nation will be raised, not with the power of flesh, but with the power of spirit, as we always quote that, not with the flag of destruction, but with the flag of love and peace. Thank you very much. And now I invite Zoya Mehween to give a vote of thanks. Good evening, once again. On behalf of Indian Americans Forum, I would like to express my sincere thanks to our outstanding speakers, Mr. Kanan Gopinathan and Dr. Vikram Singh, for providing excellent coverage on today's topic. I'm very grateful to Mr. Kanan Gopinathan for providing his detailed analysis on the role of judiciary and emphasizing upon the rights of ordinary citizens and their day-to-day -day encounters with the people in power thus exposing the relationship between the bureaucrats and general public. I would also like to acknowledge my gratitude towards Dr. Vikram Singh for his vehement speech and sharing his experiences which have inspired us to the core by stressing upon the meritocracy, intellectual integrity, and moral turpitude. 
thank you once again both of you today we had this amazing amazing opportunity to listen to your thoughts and it's surely going to be immensely encouraging your views have enlightened us and shown us a new path my gratitude to our panelists panmaja shaw madam and commodore lokesh patra ji for raising valid questions and also sharing their opinions i thank our youth coordinator mr fani badnam for the marvelous introduction my hearty thanks to the organizer dr jamil for providing us this incredible chance to hear these highly intellectual speakers thank you mr jim mr mr muzaffar uh, mr nair farah laman ji mutika anand ji smita swaroop ji narsing mamindla ji uh, mr baswaraj ji mr dinesh sharma and all the others who spent time from their busy schedule and attended this conference to make it a success thank you so much thank you sir thank you everybody thank you so much thank you thank you थैंक यू इस वीडियो को लाइक करें हमारे चैनल को सब्सक्राइब कर बेल आइकन जरूर प्रेस करें हमारी न्यू वीडियो सबसे पहले देखने के लिए फ्रेंड्स कॉल ऑन द टॉपिक ऑफ इंडियन ब्यूरोक्रेसी इस वीडियो को लाइक करें हमारे चैनल को सब्सक्राइब कर बेल आइकन जरूर प्रेस करें हमारी न्यू वीडियो सबसे पहले देखने के लिए इस वीडियो को लाइक करें हमारे चैनल को सब्सक्राइब कर बेल आइकन जरूर प्रेस करें हमारी न्यू वीडियो सबसे पहले देखने के लिए